How's it going, everybody? So recently, uh, one of my subscribers, a new subscriber, it seems, asked me a question. They said that they've been watching a lot of my tonic herb videos, um, and they said that they noticed I mentioned I followed a animal-based diet or a ketogenic diet for a period of time. And they wanted to know what my opinion was on uh, the Okinawan longevity and the blue zones and veganism and plant-based diets for longevity. Essentially, um, the blue zones, Okinawan diet, and being plant-based and vegan and all this other crap, there's a lot of nuances to this, okay? So here's the first thing, okay? So recently, evidence, uh, there's been mounting evidence that a lot of these uh, centenarians and so-called blue zones, okay, that these people, um, very, I think it's called, is it called pension fraud? Uh, I don't, don't, don't quote me on that, but a lot of these people seem to be lying about their age and their birth certificates seem to be passed down from their parents or their grandparents who use the same name as them. Uh, they seem to li like, there's evidence that they allegedly had uh, a lot of them lie about their age and their birth certificate in order to get out of like taxes or something like that. Um, there seems to be some kind of financial gain from lying about these things in those populations of people, or at least for the era that a lot of this data was collected. Um, a lot of these populations, okay, that are blue zones happen to also, um, be from populations that have poor birth keeping records. Okay. There's less like governmental oversight on those things, at least for the eras of that. These people are claimed to be born in. Okay. So yeah, there's a lot of kind of funny business involved in, and even, the accuracy of their birth certificates and how old they are. That's the first thing, okay? The second thing is a lot of this data, okay? And this is coming from somebody who literally owns Dan Boot Butner, okay? Or Bootner, however you say his name. Uh, he was, I own all of his books. I own the majority of these, like the Okinawan Solution and all these like uh, long, these uh, Blue Zone Diet books that were created. I own most of them. I, there was a point in my life where I was super obsessed with it. And I'll go around just like collecting um, Blue Zone and, you know, Blue Zone books and longevity books. Uh, and I'm kind of disappointed these days after knowing what I know about all that shit now. It, it's mostly a bunch of lies that was collected and then marketed to, so they can profit off of it. And it's really funny to me, like, how many people just eat this shit up. But that's pretty much everything these days, I've noticed. Most, the average human is so, lack, lacks so much awareness. The average human is so freaking naive, it's insane. But uh, anyway, so I own all these fucking books, okay? The diet programs in these books are fucking nothing like what these people actually eat on these islands and stuff, okay? Uh, so let's talk about... So first of all, Okinawans, I have a book on it, or I have a fucking video about this. So be, let's just say, hypothetically, that these people aren't lying about their longevity, okay? So the Okinawans, okay, you hear a lot about them only eating purple sweet potatoes and stuff like that, right? Some, someone, like, some, like, 80% of their diet was allegedly purple sweet potatoes. So during that time, that, that data was collected. Okay, in Okinawa, their island, okay, their island was was being was basically possessed by an enemy army. Okay, so this was during the time of a of a of of warfare on their island. Okay, it was like the it was it was like the the early and mid nineties. Okay, that a lot of this data was taken from. Okay, there were all sorts of wars that were taking place at the time. Okay. And enemy troops had, were, had, had taken over their island, taken over their animals, and there was a huge famine, 
Okay, another common kind of data point that is ref that is uh, taken from from this period of time in the Okinawan Island is um, that they were in a caloric deficit and they're eating like only like a eight like a thousand two hundred calories a day or something, right? And so that a lot of these longevity experts use that to back up the claim that eating in a chronic caloric deficit is going to double your lifespan and crap like that. The fact is. Anyone who's in a war famine, okay, you hear this like with the Irish people and all these things, right? Anyone who's in any kind of famine, but especially like a war famine, they're going to, they're, if your island's being possessed by enemy troops and they're eating all your food and, and, and taking all your animals and stuff, of course you're only going to eat your poverty foods, you know? And, and you're going to be in a caloric deficit because there's not enough food to go around. These people are eating purple sweet potatoes not by choice, not because of anything to do with when they were children or, or the rest of their lives uh, and their longevity. They're eating purple sweet potatoes 80% in a caloric deficit because that's all they fucking had to eat. Because during this freaking time that this data was collected, the pigs and the fish and all the other things that you would expect – island dwellers to be eating okay it's funny to me these people are like oh they they're like plant-based as hell bro like all they eat is purple sweet potatoes and the people who live past 100 the centenarians were the real vegan ones like bro they live on an island you really think they're not going to be eating fish to think that fish is not and, and sea animals are not a large part of their fucking diet when they're literally surrounded by an abundance of it you are such a naive child. <laughs> it's so hilarious to me. All these vegan, vegan, plant-based, like these longevity blue zone people, man. I swear. And to the commenter, I hope you don't feel like I'm ridiculing you. It's not you, okay? It's these, these crazy people that propagate this idea. It's insane, man. It's so funny to me, bro. Like the the peop the pe people in the Mediterranean of Crete live on a fucking island. Well, they live in the mountains, I I believe. But uh, you know, to to think you live on a fucking island and you're not eating all the fish is hilarious. Um, but nah, that's the thing. It it was um the period of time that this nutrition data was collected. They're in a, a a war famine. All right, for several years. So they had no choice but to only eat sweet potatoes, okay? So that's the big thing. So beyond that, okay, and, and I've talked about this in other videos. Um, I had karate senseis, okay, from freaking Okinawa, okay, that were, you know, I've had, you know, 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old. And they talk about what they, what they ate when they were, when they were, you know, in Okinawa and their grandparents ate when they were in Okinawa and all this sort of stuff. And and this is the big thing. When I started, you know, I had karate senseis that were telling me, I would always rant about this Okinawan diet crap that's being marketed and just how indigenous, like in, ingenuous it is, like how, how not, not true it is, how inaccurate it is, how, how evil and disgusting it is to their culture, really. Okay. To take all that crap out of context and take advantage of of their suffering and then to try to promote that as like some kind of diet paradigm that in no way shape or form represents their nutritional paradigms through the decades okay so yeah it's pretty evil and disgusting what you know i guess western civilization has done with like the okinawan culture to fucking try to make money and push this plant-based propaganda uh it's it's actually kind of irritating me now that i i'm thinking about this but um yeah it's pretty evil so uh beyond that the other thing yeah i mean okinawans not only ate a large amount of fish in fact maybe i'm mistaking this but i believe um out of most all the populations of japan through certain periods of time, Okinawa was was the one were the ones who ate the most fish, actually, which makes sense because um, of how small the island is and where it's located and things. Uh, beyond that, they also ate a large amount of pork, okay, on a regular basis, and uh, allegedly cooked everything in in pork fat, pork lard. 
Uh, they also had chickens, eggs, stuff like that on the island. Not during the time that the nutrition data was collected because the damn enemy troops were taken over all that. But yeah. Um, and so for the majority of the time of these people's lives, like the, the so-called centenarians, uh, they're eating pork, fish, lard, chickens, uh, freaking eggs, you know, in varying amounts and a lot of fish. Um, so yeah, there's that. Okay. So then, and, and yeah, and there's a, even deeper data on all of these other things I've covered in past videos, but that's pretty much it for now. I made a whole video about this like in 2017. So yeah, what about the people of Crete? Okay, so the, the Mediterranean culture that, you know, you think the Mediterranean diet comes from. So this is funny too. Okay, the Mediterranean diet paradigm that's promoted in mainstream medicine. So as a personal trainer, okay, of... Like, I've been a personal trainer since 2012, really. All, anytime I've trained a, a doctor, a nutritionist, a dietitian, okay, and I've trained a lot of nurses and dietitians and doctors, I really have. Uh, a lot of my clientele have been them, probably like 30% at least, right? Uh, it's always amazing to me when they bring up healthy nutrition and they're like, yeah, the Mediterranean, I follow the Mediterranean diet, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, I, and, and usually they're not actually following it, but they're just like trying, they're just saying that, you know, because of the stigma against doctors and how they don't eat healthy, right? Anyway, talk about eating Mediterranean diet. And they say like, then they describe it to me, right? And like, yeah, you know, um, just healthy uh, omega-3s, they say, healthy omega-3s. And then when they quote omega-3s, they talk about like canola oil and stuff like that. And I'm like, Bro, like Mediterranean, um, well, canola oil now. Canola oil is a is a modern invention. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, it came out of Canada only within the last like 60, 70 years or something like that. It was not a traditional food of freaking Crete, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, they're like, oh, just you know, like vegetable oils and this and that. Or they'll say they eat olive oil, but then when they send me the ingredient list of the olive oil they say they're eating or the whatever, it's like a it's like a mixture of like vegetable oil and or, or, or canola oil and olive oil. Um, anyway, yeah, typically it's a lot of um, foods that are not even indigenous to, to Crete, okay, or indigenous to the Mediterranean. You know, I think like, you know, like, yeah, avocados and avocado oil. And it's like, bro, like Mediterranean from at the time didn't have avocados. <laughs> like... <laughs> You know, or I, I mean, in tomatoes, even if I'm not mistaken, were an invention that came later. But don't quote me on that one. Please don't. Because if I'm wrong, that would make me sound really ignorant. But a lot of these vegetables and, and plant foods and other things that, you know, are part, part of the modern westernized Mediterranean diet paradigm were not even available in the Mediterranean, um, you know, until we started importing foods and stuff, right? Anyway. Um, so a lot of the food collection data from, from Mediterranean blue zones, okay, was taken during Lent, was taken during Lent, okay? So there are religious practices in a lot of these areas that heavily restrict the amounts of meat that someone eats, okay? And so, you know... When these blue zone researchers take their data, you know, and I know, um, what was the guy's name? Ansel Keys, right? Everyone knows about him, right? Uh, you know, they take, they took this data <laughs> from the Mediterranean during a period of time where they were following a religious practice that heavily restricted the amount of meat they're eating. Okay. And the fact that this is not widely known that they literally chose, they got their data during that time, okay? That they're not, they're not restricting meat intake year-round. It's just during Lent and these other kind of religious uh, practices. The fact that these researchers didn't state that or even chose to take that data and roll with it during this time is insane. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is um, these people eat nose to tell, right? 
And it's funny, I was reading Dan Butner's book, The Blue Zone Solution or whatever, and he was talking about, um, you know, seeing, you know, living or visiting this like grandpa in the mountains of Crete or whatever. And uh, something about this, this grandpa, he was like uh, uh, taking care of his goat or something and then greeted, greeted Dan Butner with like uh, some fresh goat's milk or whatever. You know, and they and they talk about him eating cheese and goat's cheese and all this stuff. They don't mention anything about how these people love and care for the animals and eventually butcher them and eat their organs, eat their intestine, all that, all that other stuff, eat their liver, and eat their their muscle meat as well, and, and make bone broth soups presumably and stuff like that. They didn't mention about the true kind of nature of these healthy human people. And how they eat their animals nose to tail. Because um, that would be too grotesque for a modern paradigm that's basically catered to sell you the, you know, this this um, fantasy of living an extremely long time eating nothing but fucking peas and, and carrots, all right? And a, and a little bit of goat cheese here and there, right? But yeah, so I mean, there's fraud and lies that are claimed about the birth certificates and, and their their actual ages okay um, on, on a lot of these populations there are lies about the amount of meat these people eat you know because they they literally took the data from times where they were forced against their will or choosing based on religious purposes to restrict meat intake and restrict calories and things um, and then when you know they at all these populations despite all that, um, provided they weren't being taken over by an enemy population of troops or whatever in an army and experiencing a famine, or they weren't in the middle of Lent or whatever, they would be eating animals nose to tell, you know, like, and it wouldn't make any sense that they wouldn't be, okay? Especially you're living on an island. You're not eating fish. What the fuck? <laughs> and it's funny because, like, these, you know, people who are new to all this stuff, right, um, and have not yet seen, like, I've literally been reading these books and studying these res the, the research behind all this and watching these idiot-ass vegan influence and even the carnivore influencers for over a decade now. They all fucking lie and leave information out to sell their agenda. And the information they leave out is so insanely huge and significant, you know? And then it's, I, I see these people who are just like, yeah, man, what, you never heard of Okinawans? You shouldn't eat meat because Okinawans. Or you shouldn't eat meat because, uh, you know, the Blue Zones. And to me, I'm just like, like, I don't even, I honestly ha for a long time lost my drive to make YouTube because I'm just like, there's so many myths out there and people just fucking believe these motherfucking people that are lying out their asses. <laughs> And it's like, the truth is so crazy. And I'm just like, how the fuck do these people actually, like, just the amount of lies that are out there. <laughs> and, and, the, and just how big these lies are and the fact that people just believe them. It's amazing, right? <laughs> and then when I, when I tell people these things, they can't fucking believe it. They're like, no, there's, you're, you're, you're the one who's full of crap. These people wouldn't lie. Like, bro, do you know how much money these people made off of selling you this bastardized version of a Mediterranean diet, this fucking absolute piece of shit lie of, a, of, of, of what Okinawa, they claim Okinawans eat, um, and all these Blue Zone books, bro, they've been making millions of fucking dollars off these fucking lies, okay? You know? Uh, so, you know, it's crazy. Um, yeah, and I mean, the food industry does profit, okay? The small farmers don't fucking profit off this shit. So, yeah. Um, and, and, and one more thing, okay, if you haven't thought about this before, but like, it's, it, have you ever thought about like all the, all the, the grain byproducts that are being sold out there? And marketed as healthy, like we have the vegetable oils, not to say, I'm not saying whether they are healthy or not healthy, but like, you know, soybean oil, canola oil, you know, rapeseed oil, all, 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 grapeseed oil, all these things 
that are literally sold because they had extra crap they couldn't extra grain products and things they couldn't sell you before they gotta they gotta milk as much money out of it as possible so whatever is left over the scrap material from the grains they'll turn into um, oils they'll turn into fiber products they'll turn into all this crap right they're really just trying to maximize profit you know and you ever think about how like um, you can take refined grain products like cereals and then just like throw a bunch of artificial colors and flavors and sweeteners on them and then uh, fortify them with vitamin and mineral supplements you just take a bunch of uh, artificially extracted vitamins and minerals and throw them in there, market them to kids with flashy, yeah, it's just, that's basically what the Blue Zone diet is is doing to adults, it's, uh, it's just taking all these, um, it's taking all this, like, information, and these, uh, these other things, it's marketing it, these things, and making them look really, really flashy, but it's based on a bunch of lies, Okinawans ate pork, they ate pork liver, they ate pork hearts, <laughs> you know, they ate fish. They ate lard. Okay, and people are like oh, purple sweet potatoes. There's something about the pig. And then these people, they'll ex they'll take these other things. Like it's a reservatrol from the wine, right? Now you got these researchers out there that are trying to sell you reservatrol products and wine extracts, right? And uh, <laughs> reservatrol actually has some very significant negative effects, by the way. Um, like increasing estrogen and potentially lowering your longevity and causing health problems in the short term, making you weaker, all these things. Um, and then uh, the freaking purple polyphenols in the sweet potatoes. These people, these re they're taking the damn polyphenols from sweet potatoes now and they're trying to blow that shit up. And they're like, that's the reason why Okinawans live forever because of the purple sweet potatoes. The polyphenols, bro, they're magical. Oh my God, bro. The amount of fantasy and delusion <laughs> that comes out of these things is crazy, bro. It's crazy, man. Oh my God. All right. Uh, so anyway, that's just the beginning. I, 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 you know, I could talk about um, what it calls to I could talk about, um, you know, in California, Seven Day Adventists and all this other stuff, um, but yeah, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna start with that. So yeah, leave your question comments down below and let me know if you have any rebuttals, and I'll talk to y'all next time.